Nigeria's election management body, the Independent National Electoral Commission, wants to conduct a review of its conduct of the 2023 general election with effect from next month. According to INEC, the post-election assessment will involve the Commission's regular and ad hoc staff, administrative secretaries, presiding and collation officers, political parties, election observers and service providers. The exercise will also focus on all related activities before, during and after the elections. While well, joining us now to look at what could be the high point of this electoral post-mortem, as well as other issues still arising from the elections, is Paul James, who is Africa Head of Election Programme at Yaga Africa. Thanks so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much for the invitation. Well, INEC, like we said in our intro, has announced plans, you know, to hold a post-election review from July the 4th to August the 5th. What are your expectations from this review? Well, I think this is long overdue, and it is important for the Commission that, in retrospect, it reflect or look at its old performance from the election as the way of uh, remedying whatever were the challenges from the conduct of the election before we begin to talk about the next uh, run of the off-cycle election. But my expectations specifically for this is that if the Commission will want to do a review, then the review should take a thematic approach. Because if you look at the election, uh, the entire election ecosystem as conducted by INEC, I think there were three major issues that plagued the conduct of the election. One is logistics, two is technology, and the third point is INEX communication. So I hope that the Commission will want to unpack what has happened at different levels. If you start with the first one, for instance, uh, you look at uh, logistics. The challenge we had with the presidential election was the, the perennial concerns of late commencement of polls. On election day, based on data that we got from our observers that were in all of the 774, there were delayed commencement in the southeast geopolitical zone as well as in the south-south geopolitical zone. If you put this data along what will happen in 2019, in 2015, and 2021, you realize, uh, 2011 rather, you realize that it's the same trend consistently over the first cycle of election. Perhaps it is time that I now begin to tell Nigerians what exactly are the challenges, uh, especially in managing election day logistics. Otherwise, there is already this assumption that perhaps it's INEC's own way of technically either disenfranchising voters or another way of voter suppression, especially in those regions. So INEC needs to come clean on that. The second point that I thought the Commission would need to reflect on is about its own communication. If you look at the communication around the election, in fact, if you cast your mind back to January, from January up through the election period, what I thought the Commission was doing was that it was more reactive than it was uh, proactive in its own public communication. Most of the communication that was released by INEC sort of tend to react to something that had happened. You expect that the Commission should have been forward in its thinking forwarding its own engagement. At some point, the Commission even stopped talking to Nigerians. Election happened for more than two months now, since February and March. I mean, until now, before, we are, before Nigerians are beginning to hear from the Commission again that the Commission wanted to do what has been long expected. The third point that I thought that also will cause for reflection is about technology. As we know, the entire election was centered around uh, the deployment of technology in the election. What we saw happen on election day, for me, I thought it's not really, it didn't really meet up to expectation. The expectation, for instance, was that the beavers was going to work 100% end to end. As much as it worked function optimally in the uh, authentication of voters, in voter accreditation. We saw the failure of the beavers, especially in the uploading of the polling unit level results to the IRF. Perhaps the Commission will need to tell Nigerians what exactly happened with this. Uh, but uh, the other one that I thought need to happen also is if we will expand the communication to begin to look at the conversation to look at uh, perhaps even on the Commission, the operational independence of the Commission. One of the things that we thought happened was in the appointment of people into the commission. One, uh, if you recall before the election, sometimes in July of 2022, President Buhari submitted names to the National Assembly for uh, confirmation as INEC commissioners, 19 persons. 
14 people were newly appointed, while five were people that had done their first tenure and were returned. And we heard, I mean, we saw how people raised concerns with some of the appointments, especially for one of them, for instance, that was appointed from Sokoto State, that had contested election in 2015. And we saw how people reacted, especially when the person was deployed to Jigawa State. The people of Jigawa protested that appointment. And of course, the one that was, I think, nominated for Imo or Anambra, you know, Abia State, it was also someone with questionable character. Civil society wrote specifically to the National Assembly to call for a review of that appointment, uh, those appointments. But the National Assembly went ahead to confirm those nominations. Now, uh, if you look at also how some of them administered the election, the inconsistency in the application of electoral laws across different states, as if uh, they were all working at cross purposes. But most importantly also, the timing of that appointment I thought was a problem. The appointment happened about five months or so to the election. These are some, some of them don't even have experience in how to manage or administer election. I thought it would have happened earlier so that they could understand some of the elections that were conducted before the 2019. Uh, HT and Oshun will, will have been a perfect case for them to go and understand how election will be administered before you deploy them to the field. So a lot of them went into this with no, zero experience on how to administer the election. Now, if you also, I hope the commission will also extend the review to even how it managed the election on election day. Timing for the election was a problem. This is a country with over uh, 93 million registered voters, according to INX figures. And then you are conducting election just within uh, uh, five or six hours on election day between 8 a.m. and 2.30 in the afternoon. We expect maybe part of this review to begin to think of how do we provide more opportunity for Nigerians to be able to participate, perhaps even extend the time for election, say from 8 p.m. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and this is obtained in other countries. Oftentimes, uh, you see the commission go out to other countries for peer learning and all of that. You begin to wonder, how are we even applying some of these ideas or some of these things that we pick from other, other countries? So many observer groups, so many even uh, other uh, election commission came to Nigeria to understudy the 2020 relation. I think, I mean, I, I sincerely wouldn't know what exactly would be the, the good aspects of this election that some of them took back to their country. So I think it is important that this reflection meeting happen. And while it is important to review uh, all processes in order to see how to better implement it the next time around, with this review from INEC, how can they better implement uh, some of the issues and uh, some of the strategies that are highlighted in the review. And I ask that because there will be a four-year uh, time gap between now and the next elections. It seems that a lot gets lost in the time. We get distracted by um, all the other things that are going on uh, in our country. What is uh, Yaga uh, Africa and uh, all the others that are doing hard work on your side, what are they prepared to do to remind folks um, I, at INEC that it's important to implement these changes uh, come the time of the next elections in four years, rather than just to present a very well thought out document uh, for right now. I quite agree with you that we should move away from this episodic engagement of the election. Election is a cycle. An election is an activity and not an event. And then the often time here the commission remind Nigerians about this, but when it comes to the implementation, you see a different approach. What I have observed with most of the election uh, in Nigeria is that there is always the urgency to just finish from this cycle and move on to the other or to the next cycle. I mean, I was impressed that I didn't hear so much from the commission about uh, preparation for uh, for emo for Bayasa and for Koji election. I know that will happen. I know that may also be happening by in the background. But like I had mentioned, you expect to hear first uh, in retrospect, what happened from the presidential election? What were the lessons to learn from that election? And how do we take them forward? Those three elections that are coming towards the end of the year will give us a perfect opportunity to begin to implement whatever will have been the recommendation from these stakeholders. Now, I think what is this thing impo also, also important as part of the reflection is to begin to see from the engagement in 2023, what were the recommendations by stakeholders that the commission take on board? So that it just just become 
a routine practice that we just do from this, we move on to the next one. You see beautiful recommendations, especially from stakeholders that are engaging the process, but most times the implementation is the problem. For instance, if you look at the deployment of technology, what we expect was that uh, will have been that we should have had a timeline for the testing of technology before they are deployed in, uh, for the election. This technology that was deployed, uh, the beavers, the last part of the beavers were, were deployed to the country, uh, to the states on the 3rd of January. Between the 4th and the 11th of January, the commission did field tests of the beavers, but how many Nigerians knew this? Because there was no information. When some of us approached the commission, the commission said it was that routine internal process. For me, I thought we would have managed expectations from there so that if there were concerns or challenges, Nigerians would have known how better to approach the election. This is the first time that technology is deployed on a massive scale. I thought there would have been a proper crisis communication about how to engage the process. But I also hope that lessons have been learned, that before we go into the next cycle of election, there will be enough time to test this technology. If you recall for the 2023 election, the testing happened barely 20 days before the election, when the commission decided to do mock exercise in only about 318 polling units on the 4th of February, just 20 days before the election. Now, whatever will have been the challenges from the uh, uh, mock exercise, I don't think there will have been ample time for the Commission to be able to have rectified the issues before they go into the 2023 election. So I'm hoping that between now and EMO, we've got about uh, five or six months ahead of us, that the, uh, once this review is conducted, whatever were the concerns from technology, importantly, that the Commission will solve whatever were the issues before we move forward. One other concern that has been plaguing the election is the concern around uh, the, the quality of the voter register. I don't believe, as I sit here, that we have 93 million Nigerians on the voters register. And also, when you think that election is conducted based on the number of persons on the register, if we want to begin to talk about the cost of election and, to, and how to reduce costs in going forward, perhaps we need to begin to talk about how to get a clean register. I don't know when, since we, we, we started this dispensation, since the uh, 2011 election where we had the first uh, clean registration that we had about 74 million that were captured. I don't know when the commission had done any audit of the register. So I think it is important that as part of the review also that the commission begin to talk about audit of the register. If possible, subject it even to uh, external auditors to audit the register. If you go to countries like Kenya, for instance, I saw the commission there when the presidential election happened on August 9th of 2022. And a part of the lessons I thought uh, that we should take from Kenya is that before you go into any major election, you have to get the audit report of the uh, register, uh, which is done by the KPMG. So maybe we need to begin to interrogate what is, how clean is our register, which I sincerely think there are issues. And then also, beyond that also is, uh, We've talked about technology, even from the commission, it needs to purge itself of whatever were the bad elements that derail its own uh, 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 performance or engagement of the 2023 election. It needs to come clean on whatever were the challenges from that election before we move forward. Oh, thank you so much for that, Mr. Paul James. Now, I believe you are following the proceedings at the Election Petition Tribunal. What are your thoughts so far? Have you witnessed or have you heard of any earth-shaking revelations that you believe could actually prove, you know, that the election, that the presidential election was rigged? Well, uh, I mean, it might be too early to conclude on that. I know the course is still in session, and then... For us as observer group, we had raised concerns about locations where we saw infraction. For instance, if you go to the Yaga Africa report on the presidential election, we flagged Imo and uh, River State as places where we thought there was manipulation of votes. What we saw in the uh, River State, for instance, was that vote for one party was taken and was uh, uh, allocated to another party. Because if you compare what was at the polling unit against what was submitted on the INEC resolve viewing portal on the IREF, you see a lot of discrepancies, a lot of dis differences. So we hope the court will act based on that. One of the parties have actually approached us for our report to help them in their litigation, which we shared with them. So I wouldn't want to uh, preempt what the court will do. We are following uh, events in the court closely. 
uh, some of those uh, things that have come off at the moment are very damning. We hope to see how the commission will redeem itself in the court, especially because we need to regain the confidence of the people in the ability of the commission to manage our elections going forward. But most importantly also, that the judiciary will do what is right by the people. As we all will continue to say, all eyes are on the judiciary at the moment. James of Yaga Africa, uh, head of uh, elections programs. Thank you so much for this discussion this afternoon. Mm -hmm.